Hi. <coughs> um, it's been a couple days since I've um, talked a little bit about my journey. It's really been an amazing journey. <laughs> Just really see God and everything. And it's more than I've expected so far. Right now, I'm still in Georgia. It's going to take me a while to get out of Georgia. I've hiked 30 miles. Uh, we started at Hawk Mountain Shelter um, Tuesday night, I believe, or tu Tuesday morning, and uh, thought we'd try to get to Cooper Gap and catch a shuttle because there was a big storm coming in. And uh, we, we were partway up Sassafras Mountain, which is the second hardest climb so far, when my mom and dad called and said they were in Woody's Gap and thought we were there and they'd like to see us and of course we were 13 miles shy of Woody's Gap and I was kind of bummed it sounded like they were going to move on but I had this hope maybe they'd be in Cooper's Gap I told them I thought we'd be there a little before noon and got there later because it was a hard climb at 1230 and they weren't there my husband and I talked and thought in order to save money I'd give a lot of my stuff to him and take a lighter pack and hike the other eight miles to Woody's Gap, which was a 13 mile total day. So he took my stuff and I guess 30 minutes after I left, my mom and dad showed up, but it was really a God thing because they had no room in their car. <laughs> and they took Don down here to Woody's Gap and I was just shocked when they met me at Woody's Gap. Very pleased. They had an Airbnb where we stayed the night, escaped a storm, and spent the morning sitting in on a screen-in porch, listening to the rain, visiting. Um, something I'll always cherish. <laughs> I don't get a lot of time with my mom and dad. And especially here, I feel like it's kind of like home, kind of like where I grew up in the south. A lot like the Ozark Mountains, just beauty and trees and green grass and hospitality. And I told them that morning that we had spent many days sitting on a porch listening to the rain. And so it was just really nice to get some quality time with them. Uh, Don and I managed to get two more nights. I know it sounds like we should be hiking. Instead, we're hanging out at a campground in nice little cabins. But we were way ahead of schedule. And I think that was a God thing too. Our bodies probably needed the rest. Plus this is where his ancestors are from. Some of the cabins we're staying in. Um, cute little place that's really for motorcycles. We about that. But when we told them we do ride motorcycle, they ended up letting us stay. And it's been beautiful. Now we know that our ancestors own all this ground we're sitting on. Um, Don and I have been able to explore cemeteries and see a lot of gravestones of people we've always heard about that he's related to, my kids are related to, and we've just kind of wandered upon one miracle after another. Um, a story I always loved was that of Abraham Lincoln Woody. His dad, John Woody II, was a northern sympathizer. The whole town one day was coming out to lynch him. His wife was pregnant and he ran over the mountains to escape to Tennessee and fight with the Union. And on the way out the door, he told his wife to name their son Abraham Lincoln Woody. And we saw, the, well, my husband saw a church, Zion Baptist Church, decided to pull off the road, look through the cemetery, and there was Abraham Lincoln Woody, <laughs> Woody's grave, and his wife. I guess they um, helped take care of orphan Cherokee children from the Trail of Tears. And uh, we went to the gas station, visited with people there, found out there was a lady possibly related up the road where we went today, and just spent like probably two hours visiting with her distant cousin, sharing stories, realizing we're all Christian, we're all Baptists, we have the same heritage and so many connections, and you could just feel the love I got to hold Abraham Lincoln Woody's wife's Bible and look at all her notes and tour the home that this Emma Louise grew up in that's uh, almost a hundred year old home built for a Baptist preacher by her dad that moved here to pastor their church. Just been an amazing experience. Um, 
we also were at the gas station and haven't had an actual meal. You're eating ramen and pop tarts and oatmeal and jerky and all kinds of stuff like that for what four or five days now. And a guy showed up that owned a grill seven miles from here that serves brisket and coleslaw and salad and macaroni and cheese. And he ended up telling us he'd give us a ride there for lunch today. So he took us to his place. We ate real, some of the best food I've ever had. He let us tour his little vintage camper. Took us to see a whole bunch of tiny homes. Told us his story. He's from San Francisco and has fallen in love with this area living here. Found out that he knows the pastor that's meeting my husband day after tomorrow. Um, because he used to run a restaurant right down the road from, from Pastor Steve's church. So it's just kind of neat all the different connections that we're seeing. And this was part of what the Appalachian Trail for me was about. It was exploring America, not just nature and the and the trail, but all the little towns that passes through and the people. And it's really been a wonderful experience so far. I'm sure that when Don puts this video together, he'll put some of the pictures I've taken of people and homes and, and the little restaurant. And I mean, I sat on the porch of that restaurant and got a little emotional because it just feels like, I, I told Don, I said, it feels like I've gone back 40 years in time to when I was a little girl sitting on a porch and, in front of an old gas station in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas next to a country road. It's really been a wonderful experience. So tomorrow we hit the trail again. We'll be going over the tallest mountain on the Appalachian Trail in Georgia. It's a pretty tough climb. It's called Blood Mountain. And I guess I'll talk more about that tomorrow, but uh, thank you for following along on this amazing journey.